And we're going to talk today about what's new with Intrepid once we get past the disclosures. So Intrepid, as you know, is the Medtronic transcatheter mitral valve replacement. And we're going to talk a little bit about the technology and the procedure. The, the Intrepid uh, is a dual stent valve. It has an outer frame that locks it into place. And the valve itself is 27 on all three sizes. But this separates the valve from actually the locking conformable outer frame. It fixes both by radial expansion, friction, and if you look at the valve itself, it's wider on the ventricular side than the atrial side, so it acts as a cork, and it actually wedges itself in there. It's round, so there's no need for rotational alignment, and it really accommodates tilt and lateral misalignment fairly well. This little, there's a little trough in there that fills in fairly quickly in animal, in animal trials. I worried about that at first, but it actually fills up very nicely. The delivery system is, is right now a rigid rod. It's all transapical. You put it into the left atrium, you guide it in by echo. Pretty much the entire deployment is echo guided. There's a little bit of fluoroscopy only to watch to see how the valve is coming out. You open up the rim and the, and the uh, atrium and then you pull it back under rapid ventricular pacing and you deploy it. This is an example of the uh, echo uh, post uh, Im uh, implantation. I can tell you they're really easy to put in and uh, PVL, which is something I worried about, has really been pretty much non-existent. And at 12 months, these valves tend to be well-seated and very, very functional. Now, what's coming? Well, what's coming is a couple different things. First of all, this has not been recoverable. The next generation will be recoverable. It'll have some ventricular hooks that can allow us to recover it, and the, the inner valve will go to a, move to a closed cell design, which will allow us to recover this valve. Right now, once we put this valve in the atrium and flare it, it's in. You've got to put this valve in. The new ones will be then fully recoverable. The other thing that's going to be really important is we're developing a transvenous transeptal design. And it'll be the same delivery catheter whether you want to use it transeptal or whether you want to use it transapal. It's basically the same type of design. But we'll go in there and it'll have some tilting much like a mitral valve, like a mitral valve on a mitra clip, like a mitral clip on steroids. Some of the clinical outcomes, this is our procedural planning. I'm not going to really go over this. John has just talked a little bit about this and how we do the NEO-LVOT. We're all still learning a lot about this. We just went back and looked at all the calculated NEO-LVOTs and then the post-NEO-LVOTs in Intrepid, and actually it seems to double in most of them. And you actually get more NEO-LVOT than you think. I'm going to talk a little bit about clinical events that were the clinical outcomes that Marty Leon presented at the Mitral Conclave. I'm not going to go into more detail. We've done about 56 now, but Marty will present the whole early feasibility trial at TCT this year. Their elderly patients are over 70. They're very, they're very symptomatic. The STS is 6.6. It's not that high, but these really are frail people. If you look at it, it's 80% functional MR and 20% uh, uh, organic MR. And most of the people with functional MR have EFs between 30 and 50 percent. We've tried to avoid people under 30 percent. If you look at this early result, there was successful deployment in 41 out of 43. We had to have one early open conversion. Uh, the, at the apical uh, access time to deployment time is really very short. These cases do not take very long at all. If Anson was doing it, it would probably be a 15-minute case. The other thing that's been very surprising to me is the mean LVOT gradient has been 2 millimeters. And the mean mitral gradient has been 4 millimeters. The, the, the hemodynamic performance of this valve has been excellent. There's been very, very little uh, MR afterwards. There's been four cases that had 1 plus, and then 37 of these had no MR whatsoever. There's been very good relief of symptoms. There's been still some with some symptoms, but again, these are older patients with FMR, and a lot of them have heart failure that we're not going to make completely better because right now we tend to be getting these people at the end of, of stage. We have a couple people that are now out past two years. Um, you can see the splay of, of how long these valves have been in people. The one red is a death related to the procedure but not the device. It was an apical problem. Uh, there's been a couple other uh, problems related to people surviving the procedure but then just not getting better, mainly because they had bad FMR and we chose patients that are probably too far down the treatment curve. So some final thoughts. The Intrepid is a novel transcatheter mitral valve replacement system which separates valve function from the outer fixation frame, which is really re makes it responsive to the dynamic mitral valve anatomy. The early global experiences, which as I said is about 56 now, but 44 you saw here, have really indicated predictable and accurate valve deployment and excellent elimination of MR and infrequent 
procedure-related events. And this TMIR system should allow treatment for most patients with FMR, many with DMR, and really some patients with MAC right now not too severe, although I think Paul, who's on the, the committee with me, we're lobbying for more and more calcium to be included because this is a big part of what all of us are seeing. The next generation systems will enable device recovery and transeptal access strategies. Transeptal is something I'm really waiting for. I think that will fundamentally change this field. And uh, we're going to have pivotal randomized trials very, very soon. Thank you very much. Great presentation. Um, while others um, start asking questions, may I ask with a, a question? Um, what is the current, with the current device, what is the screen failure rate specifically due to the risk of LVOT obstruction? Well, so if, if you're below 200, we really are not happy. If you're above 250, we're happy. If you're between 200 and 250, it's kind of like, eh, let's look at things. I think we're trying to move that down now because mm -hmm. as we sat back and, and you know, Paul, you were at that meeting, we looked at yeah. these and they, they all had gotten bigger than we thought. So we were thinking about going down to 180 or maybe even more. And, but right. how about the rate? Like what percentage yeah. of patients mm -hmm. are the rate screen is, failures? The rate is hard oh, screen fails. Yeah. Yeah. Screen yeah. fails. Is it 50%? Yeah. Yeah, it, 20%? It, 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 it's, it's about 40% yeah. right now. It, it, it's a significant number. Yeah, and, and it's hard because the screen rate is determined by the denominator. Yeah. And, and, and depending on the experience and the selection, yeah. um, it, it can vary. Uh, but it's probably around 30 or 40 percent that uh, patients pass in terms of ones who are submitted. So it's, it's actually not bad. Um, but that being said, as we push the boundaries, you can yeah. imagine that that screen uh, failure rate is only going to go up. But we also uh, right. screen fail a lot of our own Meyer before we ever send them in. Right. I mean, you'll get exactly. somebody that has a 100-degree you know, angle, and we just won't even submit them. Yeah. I can, they, the engineers are the ones who choose this, and they have about eight different parameters, and they're not weighted, yeah. and so it becomes a gestalt. Yeah. So, so what comes through and yeah. what doesn't, it, the denominator is very important. And it's a gestalt based on how conservative the vendor is yeah. about wanting to implant to, yeah. because we all want to be successful. We all want to yeah. win, and, uh, and it's, it's a difficult gestalt as well. Right? Yeah. Right. Right. Thank you.